G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are going to talk about the priority pick situation. Um, I'm doing a video on this purely because it's kind of a topic that's in the air at the moment. It's not actually something I'm thinking about as an Eagles fan, but nonetheless, you know, I work in this space. Uh, priority picks and West Coast at the moment are a topical thing. It's a generally AFL topic that affects all 18 teams, so that's why I'm putting it on True Footy. So I thought, you know, I would just uh, verbalize some of the thoughts I'm having around this because there's been a lot of discussion, and uh, I, I don't know, I think there's some faulty logic out there. So you probably clicked on this video assuming I'm going to make an impassioned plea for why West Coast deserve priority picks, a start a first round pick. Not really. My thoughts are a little bit more nuanced than that. I'm pretty balanced. I think this faulty logic being thrown left, right, and center here. So I just thought we'd have a conversation and see where it sits. So at the moment, West Coast is four games into a season. So that's kind of the reason I haven't really been thinking about the priority pick as a concept for us. You know, I'm still hopeful that this season doesn't necessarily go as bad as the last couple of years and, and really justify that priority pick. And I don't think it's a foregone conclusion yet. Sure, we're going to finish bottom two, probably. I still think we, we might avoid the spoon. I, I do think that, but regardless, it's not really the point of this conversation. More just explaining that I'm not really thinking about the priority pick and I, I kind of don't want to think about the priority pick in real terms until probably the end of the season. So it kind of irks me to see this conversation happening and a lot of dialogue about how we're the worst team of all time. But th this has probably brought up some of the interesting, like contradictory logic that I'm seeing about West Coast at the moment. So there's a school of thought that, you know, we're a hopeless basket case. Worst team of all time, Fitzroy levels. It's an absolute joke, joke of the competition. But it feels simultaneously that those people who are saying those things, when asked if West Coast should get a priority pick, are like, no, 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 God no, God no. So, so let's let's unpack that for a start. So, West Coast record over the last two and a half years speaks for itself. Um, going back to the middle of 2021, injury crisis 22 and three, we were already you know on a pretty steep decline based on some of the terrible performances at the end of 21. And I think we've started 24 in reasonable shape considering our expectations. I really think the criticism of us being absolutely uncompetitive have been uh, a little over the top, a little over the top. Obviously we've lost all the games we've played, um, but I think we're still kind of shaping up as you'd expect a normal wooden spoon contender to shape up as. And so I, I do think it's a little bit early to be, to be talking about a priority pick this early in the season, but I suppose people are going for engagement and clicks. There's an important thing to remember as well here. No one is neutral in this conversation. There are no neutrals when it comes to deciding whether a team gets a priority pick, or at least in that conversation, right? Because sure, West Coast fans, myself included, have a vested, vested interest in West Coast getting a priority pick, naturally, but it's not as though the other 17 clubs are unaffected. And I, can, I relate to this. It wasn't even that long ago, North Melbourne got a bunch of priority picks, and you know, I don't think I argued against it you know, publicly. I don't think I ever said that it was unfair or anything like that. But naturally, as an Eagles fan, in an already diluted draft, you know, I didn't want the North to get priority picks as, as in putting my Eagles fan hat on rather than my true footy hat on. So I understand completely why people don't want to see it happen. But I do think there's probably some, some faulty logic being thrown around. So first of all, I mean, there's a first question about whether West Coast deserve one, okay? And, and the biggest arguments against that that I've seen have been the fact that they won a flag in 2018 and the fact that they shouldn't be rewarded for bad list management decisions. So let's start with the list bad list management decisions. I think it's bad logic because every team in the history of time who has won a wooden spoon has done it off the back of a variety of bad decisions that's led them to that point. No team accidentally falls to the bottom of the ladder through sheer bad luck. What would even constitute that anyway? I mean, maybe a historic injury crisis. So West Coast do kind of have an excuse, but it, I'm not saying that it is the reason they fell to the bottom of the ladder. I do probably think it's the reason we became pathetically horrific in the middle of 23. I think it was a trickle down effect, a long period of time of not having enough players on the list. But regardless, regardless, the, the logic that a team doesn't deserve a priority pick because they've made bad decisions that led them to the bottom of the ladder, that has been true for every single priority pick in the history of time. And if you reserve for teams that only have bad luck, well, those teams probably shouldn't get a priority pick because it implies that they're probably going to come back soon again. I'd also probably push back a little bit on the, the list management decisions as such. Like, I actually would like to see, you know, a detailed analysis of what list management decisions people think West Coast got wrong. Sure, they went for Tim Kelly. I saw Damien Barrett it was quoted as saying the Eagles gave up three first round picks for Tim Kelly. It's not true. No one has ever been traded for three first round picks. It's actually incredibly hard to get three first round picks. You'd have to trade for another first round pick in order to trade all three to a different club. But anyway, sure, the Tim Kelly deal obviously looks bad in hindsight. The Eagles didn't win another flag. They lingered in the top five and then fell away. So it was two first round picks. And you know, look, if you, if, I've done a video on what would happen if Tim Kelly never went to West Coast. And sure, let, let's say the Eagles get gifted Chad Warner and Mitch Georgiatis. So like best case scenario, that's who they picked in those drafts. Would either of those players have a meaningful difference on how 
good West Coast is right now? I don't think so. Chad Warner's an absolute star. But Tim Kelly's been pretty damn good too. So even if you say Chad Warner comes in and improves on what Tim Kelly gave, does anyone think the Eagles are not in the position they're in? Same thing with Mitch Georgiatis. Like, that, that's ridiculous. Then there's list management calls like, you know, for instance, West Coast should have traded some of their players when they had value. Well, that's kind of a ridiculous call. Like, you, first of all, it doesn't really happen. The only time that we've really seen players push out of clubs, generally, it's because of a salary cap situation that has directly come about from bad list management decisions. West Coast haven't needed to do that. West Coast hasn't flirted with the top of the salary cap at all. So that's actually something they've done well from a list management point of view. They've never had it to offload a player. You know, they've never had to offload a Brody Grundy or Adam Trelaw, not to throw shade at Collingwood. Those examples just came to my mind. But also like you, you have the choice. You, you trade them when they're good. Well, that seems stupid at the time because we were a decent team. And then do you try and trade them once they're shit? Well, nobody wants them then. So then you might, might look at the Hawthorne model of, of like Jordan Lewis and Sam Mitchell. Those guys were traded for like pick 88, I think Sam Mitchell was traded for. So spare me on that. Spare me. I, I don't think the list management decisions have been too bad. I, I actually just think the strategy was in line with obviously trying to play a lot bit longer. Maybe you could look at the veterans that we signed on long-term contracts. Okay. Nat Nui, he retired a year early. So that kind of mitigated that. In his last full season, he won back-to-back -back all Australians. McGovern and Cripps were gifted fairly long contracts. But to be honest, like who's looking at West Coast right now and saying they'd be better without Jeremy McGovern or Jamie Cripps? Like, oh my God, Jeremy McGovern has been close to our best player and one of the best defenders in the league in the first four rounds of the season. Elliot Yo might also win the best and fairest this year. We wouldn't be better had we traded these players for pick 50. There's a few list management decisions I didn't like. Um, you know, maybe we signed Rotham to a longer contract than I'd like. Trading for Zach Langdon, the pick 54, whatever it was we gave up for him. Sure, we've made mistakes. But it hasn't actually resulted in us falling away like that. It's all been on field. The two that hurt are probably Gaff and Darling. Now, Gaff signed his six-year contract in 2018. He was just all Australian. We won a premiership. I don't regret that decision at all. Same thing with Darling. I reckon his was in 2019. He had just won an All-Australian jumper that year as well. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling here. I've got on my soapbox, but I actually don't think it's list management as such has caused West Coast to be in the predicament they are. The, the roots are much deeper. I've done a whole video on it, um, but I think it's a faulty premise anyway. But let's talk about the flag as well. This is interesting. And I, I'm not really saying this, you know, to make an impassioned argument to change your minds, but I, I was just kind of thinking about this outside before I recorded the video. West Coast won a premiership in 2018. That is one of the strongest arguments against them getting a priority pick in 2024. And then I started thinking like, why is it relevant? Why is it relevant that we won a premiership six years ago? What is a priority pick intended to do or a priority assistance package? It's intended to help our clubs from being a diabolical basket case and keeping the league watchable. Now, there are people saying that about West Coast right now. West Coast having won a premiership five years ago does not really preclude them from necessarily having a dire 10 years on field. So I'm actually a bit of a loss. I've also heard the money argument that West Coast are, are wealthy, so they don't deserve the same priority assistance packages as a Gold Coast or a North Melbourne. I mean, that's all well and good. West Coast are wealthy, but we already have a salary cap. We also have a cap on football department spending. There's already equalization measures in place. So are we building a league where only the non-wealthy clubs have access to extra draft picks? I think that's weird. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not actually thinking West Coast should necessarily get a priority pick this year. I think people generally don't like priority picks. And I, I actually am on board with that. But as an Eagles fan, you can understand how we might be feeling in this situation as the same thing with North Melbourne 12 months ago and the year before that. We just don't want to be the first team and the only team not to receive any assistance when it's been a thing for a long time. North Melbourne were making that argument, you know, with, with their assistance packages. Some people thought it was too generous. Well, I can see what they're thinking when they look at Gold Coast who got pick one and two in 2019. Also, like to speak with such certainty about the fact that the Eagles, you know, they want a flag so they shouldn't get a priority pick. I mean, don't forget, like we're talking about a set of rules that don't seem to be written written down anywhere that are not made public. And West Coast would be the first team in history where this logic would be applied. They would be the first team to miss out on a priority pick ever because they won a premiership. So speaking about it in such certainty when we don't even have fully disclosed rules is kind of silly too. To be honest, I'm kind of against priority picks as well. I kind of like a little bit more of a capitalist approach. Let teams try and fight their way out of it and think unless things are diabolical, I'm optimistic that things will improve this year. I think they've started to, and it's a long season. We can improve over the course of the season. Hopefully this, is, this conversation is irrelevant. I'm hoping that, but obviously people disagree with that. And I could be wrong, I could be wrong. I think if things get as bad as they did last year in terms of a on-field competitive point of view, and I don't think this will happen, but if it did, I think it is at the point where you probably do need to help West Coast out. But I'm not calling for it because I don't want that to happen. I really don't. And uh, we're not there yet. So ask me again if it happens. One argument for West Coast getting a priority pick, if I had to put my hat on there and, and try and make a claim is the draft is so damn compromised at the moment. I mean, West Coast won the wooden spoon last year. 
and entered the second round and started the second round at pick 30. You know, by contrast, in 2009, the Eagles finished second last. They didn't even win the spoon. And they got a priority pick because they had four wins or less. That was worth pick two, which was Nick Natanui, pick 18, which was Luke Shuey, and pick 20 with Tom Swift. So two genuine guns out of that draft for a start. Three picks in the top 20. It's, you don't really get the same thing this year. And don't I really don't want anyone to throw the Harley Reid trade argument out of there. I think this was a Sam McClure thing. He said that because West Coast didn't trade for Harley Reid, it's their fault that they don't have more draft capital. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's technically true, but you, we have to give something up in that scenario. We have to give up pick one. We have to give up Harley Reid. And I was thinking, like, how funny would it be right now? Had West Coast traded that pick, right? And we have Dan Curtin, who hasn't played a game yet because he's been injured. And we have Riley Hardiman and Taylor Goat on our list because of the three picks we traded it with. Guarantee the media would be talking about how amazing Harley Reid looks for North Melbourne and how our first round draft picks haven't played a game and we look dire as hell. And Anyway, I'm kind of ranting here. I, I just think there's been some silly logic out there. We'll, we'll wait and see. I'm, uh, I'm not getting my hopes up about a priority pick. I don't really think it will happen. But those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. I think uh, some of the arguments out there are a little bit silly. Let me know in the comments, guys. I can't wait to get picked apart. I mean, last year I did a video on North Melbourne getting priority picks. Didn't once say in the video that I didn't think they should get priority picks. But what I did do in the thumbnail, I chose a photo of me where I'm looking a little bit annoyed. And you kind of implied... It kind of implied that I didn't want North to get priority picks. And of course, the comments were all just like defending North Melbourne, tearing me apart, but that's all right. Thanks for the click. Make sure you like the video. <laughs> anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. Let me know genuinely in the comments what you think. I think this is an interesting discussion. I just wanted to pick apart some of the, the bad logic that I think is out there. We'll see what happens. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.